Hello and welcome to AutoInform online magazine Frank's Toolbox feature. What we're going to take a look at now is something we're actually trying to develop a little further in its current form. Blocked exhaust systems, block catalysts, are one of the problems we have to overcome and to try and diagnose them accurately before we take any remedial work. By remedial work I mean any removal of components or replacement. There has been in existence for some time a simple tool, it's a pressure gauge, for testing excessive pressure in the exhaust stream. This particular gauge goes minus one bar, around 30 inches of mercury, to plus two bar of pressure. In a normal environment, we do not anticipate more than somewhere around five inches of, of, of mercury, which is about 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 of a bar total maximum pressure in the exhaust stream. An additional feature that we're working with currently, with one of the leading exhaust manufacturers, is a similar tool, or development of this tool, to see if we can diagnose partially blocked DPFs and catalysts on diesels as well, although this vehicle obviously is a petrol vehicle, but it would have an obvious application also for diesel systems as well, which given an awful lot of trouble. And to achieve that, of course, we then require a diagnostic port to be manufactured in the system. And by diagnostic port, I mean a mechanical port, which is normally occupied by a lambda sensor. So the first thing we need to do now is to remove the lambda sensor in order to place the fitting with which this gauge will operate. I've already partially slackened the sensor. They can, of course, seize in. So be prepared to have a tap and a thread repair kit available should it rip the threads out. You can see they're extremely dry. There is a special grease or compound uh, with which to reassemble those which we do actually have and use. <coughs> so the sensor is out. We now need to screw in the adapter from which the gauge is then connected. And this doesn't have to be particularly tight, although obviously absent of any leakage, that will affect the pressure reading. We've actually conducted some tests on the open road. And interestingly, what we found was that the maximum load, or pressure, was actually at the lower end of the engine speed range, uh, but with a very high throttle setting. I think we would pull away from a junction in second gear, um, and it's about 2,000 RPM, the maximum pressure deviation was recorded. But that was actually, to be fair, on the diesel engine, not petrol. As I say, we're doing some development work with Clarius um, in order to prepare a process procedure, if you like, for diagnosing DPF and catalyst-related problems. Right, the gauge is attached, quite a simple operation. Of course, when we run the vehicle with the lambda sensor out, it's going to affect the fueling uh, because we're now, in effect, not sending a feedback signal uh, for the oxygen content in the exhaust. But we're now in a position to start the engine. You can see the, the pulses in the exhaust system are somewhat erratic. There are pressure differential events within the exhaust. Obviously as the exhaust valve opens, gases are forced out and the exhaust valve will then close. This is an undamped gauge, it's a, a gauge, type of gauge I do prefer. Um, although this is reinforced, if you wanted to slow down the effects of that, you could try crimping the hose, but the reinforcement's actually stopping that. We're thinking of modifying this hose for a, um, a neoprene, reinforced neoprene hose, so we can actually crimp the hose, or even fit maybe a valve, so we can actually slow the damping down. But we're getting a reading of between plus 0.1 of a bar and a negative pressure of 
around five inches of mercury. Now obviously this is a tidal. I'm going to try to reach across to the throttle if I can. In fact, if I can ask an assistant to actually rev the uh, club for me, just so we can see. And this is very much static. This doesn't represent what will happen on the actual road because obviously the gas flow is much higher. Just to see if any additional positive pressure. A really good full, full throttle acceleration. I would say at most there, we had five PSI on the gauge, up to possibly about just under 0 0.3, 0 0.4 of a bar. And also interestingly, we had a little bit of tappet jacking take place then. The engine is still cold, and we had an erratic engine, so I suspect it's stuffing a bit of tappet jacking. But anyway, we, we, we had an increase in pressure up to around about 5 PSI or 0.3 of a bar. Actually, very similar readings to the diesel engine, which we're doing some development work on. And really, that is it. It really is that simple. Um, benefits, it saves having to drop the exhaust, um, see if the uh, uh, condition of the engine running improves. But in most cases, the actual design of the exhaust is quite important to the way in which the engine does actually control its fueling. The back pressure, what, what back pressure there is, is a design feature of that engine performance factor. Um, so using a gauge is, is a smarter way of doing it. Now, of course, this can be brought into further use where there is more than one lambda sensor. We're doing pre-catalyst on this vehicle. Should there be a post-catalyst sensor, then we could also use this gauge to measure pressure differential on either side of the catalyst as well. But thank you for watching the feature, and I hope you found this of some use too.